So remember that if we want to change the line weight of detail items, I have to double click here. I open the detail item, I double click, and now I can change the line weight or the line type. I can use hidden lines. It doesn't make sense, okay? but that would be a hidden line. We don't want to do that. Yet. But uh, this is how we change the uh, the line types of this. And I have to do this with every single element. Okay, so if I select, I select the family, I double click, now I select the lines, and now I can change uh, the line type or the line weight. Um, this is important because uh, we have to print it out. And when we print it out, we start uh, uh, realizing that uh, some of the line weights might be different. And uh, well, so if we, if we want to change the line weights, it's not difficult uh, because basically we change one of the, we change the detail. And then when we load into the project, we update all the elements that we have in the project. Okay, so we don't have to do it with all the, the elements that we have uh, copied or, or pasted or whatever. Anyway. Uh, when it comes to language, I think that's better because especially when we're working with membranes, uh, this option is not, okay, so working with thin lines is not an option because we need line weights uh, because precisely uh, what we want to emphasize is that there's a membrane here and that membrane in the real world, it's a film, so it doesn't have any thickness, so it's something very thin. And the only way we have to point it out in the drawing is to create a, a new line type with a new line weight that it's slightly thicker than the rest of the lines that we have in the drawing. Okay. So uh, let's keep going. Here we have all the elements and now we have to do the, the horizontal thing and then we have to connect the floor and the roof. Uh, the roof seems way easier because we have fewer elements. Basically, we have more thermal insulation. The thickness of the thermal insulation is, well, it's thicker. Uh, we have membranes here. And uh, what is this? This is a slope structural roof deck. Okay. If this is sloped, uh, because even when we have a flat roof, uh, we need a light slope so that we can get rid of water. Okay, so if it's completely flat, horizontal, uh, the water stays there. So we need a slope. 1%, 2% is enough. And then this is the roof drain. Okay, so uh, uh, you see the, the slope or the roof is sloping down this way. And uh, this is a cap. So this cap uh, prevents solid particles like leaves or dead birds from entering the, the drainage system, okay? But the water can go there and uh, there will be a drainage pipe going all the way down. Uh, we are not going to do that detail, but this is the, room, the roof drain beyond. Uh, beyond means that we are not catching to this drain, okay? But this is what it means. We have a cap if you want to see uh, the detail of this uh, roof drain section. Yep, yeah, this is it. Okay, so you see that it's an element that goes through the solid elements of the roof. What's that? Uh, it has a cap, so that cap protects. Uh, so it allows water to go through the tap, but not solid particles. So there is not a jam in this. And uh, here we will have the drainage, the drain pipe going down. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that would be the the section of that detail. So we have the the cap, we have the the element, and here we start with the drain, and it goes down. Okay. So there are different sections. Again, we are not. Uh, working with this section. And uh, if you want to section through this element, uh, you can copy any detail because we have a lot of, but that's the idea, okay? So we have the slope. You see that the roof 
uh, even if it's a flat roof, we have a light flow and uh, we end up here. So that element collects all the water and then this pipe goes all the way down um, to the foundation level. So this is what this roof drain means. So here we only see the cap because we are not cutting through this element. And this is the sloped uh, structural roof deck. Okay, so probably there's a detailed item like this. What is a roof deck? A structural roof deck is this element. Okay, so it's a, a, it can be made of aluminum or galvanized steel, usually galvanized steel. I think it's cheaper. Uh, so we have this element like this, it's folded because uh, we have talked about the uh, the great thing about folding things. we have to uh, find uh, this element. Uh, so we have to go to insert, uh, load family, and where would that be? RS. We don't have roofs. Okay, so that's in detail items metals, steel decking, and uh, we're going to use this family, okay? So uh, insert this family. And uh, if we go now to uh, annotate component, detail component, uh, that's the, the steel decking. Well, probably it's not the right one, but okay, it, it goes uh, well. So I, I'm going to use this one. Probably there's another one that fits better uh, with this shape, but we're going to use this one. Um, so we can do this and we can copy, okay? So we can always copy uh, this detail or we can place it here and then we can do that. Or I'm going to create a, a repeating a detail component, okay? Just to remind you of how to do this. Uh, so first, uh, we have to select a repeating detail component. Uh, let's select this uh, CMU, edit type, and duplicate. And we are going to name it the uh, roof deck. Um, okay, so the pattern is not this one. I have to select the pattern. So it's the composite a decking section. Uh, we have a fixed distance and the spacing is eight inches. Uh, let's see what it does. If I go to annotate a, a repeating detail component and we'll have the roof deck here, what does it do? Okay, I don't think uh, this is what we want. So uh, we have to select the roof decking, edit type, and detail rotation. Uh, I think uh, we have to rotate it 90 degrees, clockwise or counterclockwise. I don't know, let's say clockwise, see what happens. And now, um, if I do this again, Component, repeating detail component, this roof decking. Um, okay, interesting. This is not what I wanted. And this is not what I wanted. Okay, so select it again. Oh, okay, yeah. 
uh, my mistake. This is what I want, but the problem is that the line was too short and uh, I didn't have, so now I have to fix the spacing. Okay, so I have to select this and the spacing is uh, eight inches. We can measure that, but let's try six inches, apply. Uh, okay, I think six inches is perfect. Okay. Uh, so now uh, this is what I need uh, here. I'm going to move it here. Okay, so I have created, I have inserted the, uh, this detail component. I have created a repeating detail component. Uh, I need to figure out what I'm doing. So I have to change the rotation because by default, apparently it moves or it places the things vertically and that works for concrete masonry unit and for bricks. But for this thing, we need a horizontal. So we rotated it, we fixed the spacing and uh, apparently now it works. Okay, so we have this element. I really don't understand uh, what the hell is that uh, because if we analyze a uh, roof decking section, Yes, so this is how it works. Okay, so we have the roof uh, decking, we have the folded steel plate here, and then we pour concrete. So there is always like a part of this is made of the steel decking, and then it has a thickness of concrete. Um, so I don't really understand what we have here. Apparently, that would be concrete, okay? But uh, we're going to we're going to do something something different here. Anyway, uh, that's the first um, layer, and then we have two layers of thermal insulation. Well, we have everything can be uh, just uh, because that's the uh, gypsum. Okay, so it's the same material as this one. Uh, slightly thicker on the roof than here, but uh, we can always create a region, a field region, and just by creating a rectangle, what's the, maybe this is one inch, because the other, uh, this one was a half inch. Okay, uh, the thickness of this was half inch. Uh, so if this is slightly thicker, it can be three quarters or one inch. And now I have to change the, uh, the material. If I right click, overwrite graphics in view. And uh, in material, we have gypsum plaster. Okay, so we have this material here. This is a rectangle of this fall ceiling. And uh, we have the thermal insulation. So for the thermal insulation, I need to see the the thickness of this, I don't know. Kind of, I don't know if that will be four inches apparently, yeah, okay. So the thickness of this thermal insulation is four inches. We have two panels. So we have eight inches of thermal insulation. If it's rigid insulation, it will work well. Uh, we don't, uh, yeah, we don't have any information about the kind of uh, insulating material that we have here. If it's rigid insulation, it's a flat roof, this is what I would do, or this is what I was told uh, to do when I was a student. Because it's a roof, flat roof, it's exposed to the water. If we use something that can be damaged uh, with water on a roof, I don't think it's a good idea. So I would use a uh, rigid insulation in, in uh, as a thermal insulating material here, okay? Anyway, uh, we have uh, four inches, so we can always draw a model line. We can create a rectangle, and that rectangle can be a four inch. inches. Okay. 
and uh, why is it green? Oh, because I think I used a model line. Uh, so I want uh, to use detail line and then uh, the wood bar. Okay, so uh, if you use the, the architectural de uh, model line by default, it's green. Uh, I think it's better using uh, detailed lines and here we can control the, the line style, okay? So, uh, well, first, uh, this has to be four inches. Uh, second, it doesn't have to be this line type. This is a waterproof. So I have to change this to a thin line. Okay, that's fine. I get rid of this. And finally, if it's thermal insulation, I need to use this uh, annotate, uh, this insulation. Uh, we have uh, four inches. So I can do this. Yep. So now we have the, the finish, the gypsum wall or the gypsum fall ceiling. Uh, we have, uh, this is a tiny air gap, okay? Uh, then we have the roof deck, but I need to add the concrete layer here. I'll do that. And then we have the thermal insulation material uh, with four inches. And I need, uh, well, I, I already have this dashed line and I need a different dashed line here uh, outside. Okay, um, I told you that I don't quite like this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add the, the concrete layer. Okay, so when I have this, then I pour concrete and I have like a concrete layer that it's slightly thicker than the metal deck itself. How can I do that? I can create another uh, field region. I can select the the elements that we have. No, I can't. Okay. Field region. Do I have to trace it? Apparently, I have to. Okay, I can go up to this midpoint and uh, then I can go one foot, no, one inch, uh, let's say like three inches up, but two inches. Like this. Okay. And now um, I can uh, override graphics in view. And I can select the material, uh, concrete. Okay. And uh, can I make it better? Yeah, so now I only have to copy uh, this here. So by copying this, I will end up, yeah, so that's annoying of this kind of, I have to change the material in every single, okay, I'll do it. But uh, I don't want that line, so how can I get rid of it? Um, I can select invisible line here. Okay. So now I don't see uh, that line. And if I mirror, I have a connection here and I don't want the invisible line. The problem is that I have to, I'm going to mirror. Um, okay, so now I want this. Uh, I want to select this line. 
I want invisible lines too. Okay, and now I can keep uh, using the mirror here. Like this, so I don't have this line. Uh, can I change all of them at once? Shoot. Overwrite graphics in view. Uh, material concrete, apply. Okay, yeah, so I can change all of them at once. Okay. So I think this is more accurate than that, or at least I don't understand what they are doing here. Uh, I don't know. Because the metal deck, it's something like that. It has the, the deck itself, and then we have concrete. Uh, we could have reinforcements. Okay, so you see that uh, we have steel reinforcements. Let's split hairs here, because um, uh, we can use some reinforcement if we want to add more resistance to the, to the deck itself. I can add, uh, so how can I do that? I can always uh, work with detail lines and I can create a circle and uh, steel reinforcement is uh, something like this. What's the, well, it depends. Uh, detail line, circle. Okay, so it's not waterproofing. I have to use uh, thin lines. Then I can create a circle. The diameter, well, the diameter depends, let's say one fourth. Okay. So that would be reinforcement. Uh, I can always uh, override graphics in view by element. And uh, if it's a reinforcement, the weight, uh, I would make it like three. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so that's the steel reinforcement. And the steel, uh, the separation, again, we have to calculate that. But if we come up with four inches, so we can always have uh, this element every four inches. Again, to do this. Okay, so I can select the medium lines. Okay, medium lines work. So that would be the reinforcement. You see that we have reinforcement here. It depends. So we might need it or we might not. But if we need reinforcement, okay, so that's the steel reinforcement of this metal bag. Okay, so now that looks, uh, by the way, we have to keep copying. There we go, this one. Okay, so that looks more professional because we have the metal deck, uh, we have the concrete, and then we have the steel reinforcement for the concrete. So now it looks like a real uh, detail. Okay, uh, so now we have to put everything together and uh, assembling this, it's uh, important. Um, so we have this level and uh, that is, okay, so we have this level, that's the roof or the ceiling level. So if that was 489, this is 486. So apparently uh, the roof or the ceiling level is three feet below the, the roof or that structural level here, okay? So I'm going to copy this uh, three feet down. Okay. And now the ceiling is going to be at this. We have a slope, you see, 
here we have the horizontal line and we have this slight slope. Uh, we can always do that by rotating, but first uh, you see that uh, the deck goes up to the concrete masonry unit. Okay, so there is a continuity between the, the structural element. Uh, this is a structural uh, wall element and this is a roof. So probably there will be a connection here. It's not clear how they did it, but um, uh, what we have to do now is to select all these elements. We have to move them down. Okay, all these lines. Move them down. Okay, then we will fix the, the length. And uh, apparently there's a gap, there's an air gap between the false ceiling slab or the false ceiling element and uh, the roof deck. I don't know how much is this, half inch or three quarters or one inch, whatever, something like that. But there is a gap here. Um, and now we have to move this all the way up to the wall. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the deck. Um, now uh, this wall finish it goes up to the so those lines they go uh, up to this level. And that wall finish. There is always a small gap, you see, between the element itself and the structural element. Why is that? Uh, because especially if something is structural, it can bend. So if, if there is something touching this and it bends a little, the crack will appear here. So uh, what do we do? We assume that there's gonna be a crack, <clears throat> but this is a crack that we control. Okay, so just by uh, leaving a, a, a gap, one quarter of an inch of an inch or one eighth of an inch, but uh, we don't, uh, yeah, so these two elements, these two different materials, they are not touching each other. If you can see here, we have gaps, okay? So every time we have a material in a different material, we have tiny gaps and that prevents uh, cracks from happening. Okay, so uh, we have a gap here. That's the, and uh, well, they have created a continuous line there. Mm, look at this, that's interesting. Okay, so probably uh, what they are doing is to connect the, the deck and the concrete wall <clears throat> Yeah, what's that connection? Uh, probably they have like an... Yeah, this is the wall. And that's the structural deck. I think they have like the L-shaped element here. And this is what that line means. Okay, so we can have like an L shaped element uh, that will be bolted to this and that will be bolted to that one. And now there's a connection between the, the wall and the deck, the structure of the deck. Probably at that scale, they consider that it's not worth uh, showing it, but apparently there is something here. Okay, so there might be like an angle. Uh, connecting the deck and the, the wall. Well, I don't know. We're not going to do it, but uh, uh, I think there should be something here connecting the deck and, and the other one. Uh, what else? Oh, the okay, so you see, again, there is a tiny gap between the horizontal false ceiling and the vertical gypsum wall. The same thing we have there. Okay, so we have a gap between the wall and the, the ceiling. So we can have a gap here, okay? So we have this tiny gap there. And I think we are good. Um, 
the problem now is the, the tilt. Can we rotate uh, this? Okay, let's try. If I select this and I rotate, and I place the center of rotation here, um, I can control the angle. So here we have the angle, let's say two degrees. I think it's too much. Let's uh, rotate only one. Again, I select this, I click rotate. I have to place the center of rotation here. And now uh, this is the first point. And now I go up and I type one. And this is, yeah, so we rotate this like one uh, degree. Uh, bad news is that we have to rotate everything now. So let's rotate this. Let's select all these, place the center of rotation here. What the hell? Select all these, rotate, place center of rotation here. Now we go one up. Yeah, so we have the same tilt. And the same thing with this one. Okay, select the thermal insulation, select rotate, place the center of rotation here, and then click and one up. So now, uh, yep, I can place this. Sometimes it's better doing this without the rotation, but anyway. So since here it is slightly rotated, we have done the same thing. Okay, uh, that's interesting because uh, look at the how they place the, the thermal insulating panels. Those are rigid panels. Uh, so, uh, well, they have decided to interrupt this here and to uh, I think we have to do something different now. Um, okay, but let's, uh, we will do that later. Uh, we have another, we can copy this one. Uh, let's copy this here. Uh, oh, and I have to copy both, sorry. I have to copy the rectangle itself and the texture, so let's copy it. Click and click on that line. There you go. Uh, we don't know that thickness, but we will fix it later. But now we have two uh, panels of thermal insulation. Okay, so we are getting there. Uh, we have the gypsum fall ceiling. Then we have a tiny air gap here. That's the air gap. Then we have the roof deck. In this case, we have a roof deck, metallic roof deck. We have concrete and we have a reinforcement. And then we have the thermal insulating materials, four inches, two panels, four inches each panel. And, uh, and what's the finish? Okay. So do we have any information about that? Yeah, we have this uh, half inch gypsum sheeting uh, secured to blocking. So that material is gypsum. And then we have the extent roofing membrane. Okay, so here we have like two different materials. We have the gypsum and then we have the roof membrane. And the same thing here, we have some gypsum and then the roof membrane. Yeah. Um, okay, but so far, uh, I think we're good. So let's stop uh, this and now let's keep going uh, here, okay? Because we need to uh, understand uh, what uh, all this stuff uh, that we have here, uh, what this is. Okay.
what's this? Um, this is wood blocking secured to CMU wall with counter sunk galvanized expansion bolts uh, front and rear of parapet. Wow. Okay, so, uh, well, it sounds like terrible, but what this is, they are two just uh, wooden blocks. Well, we have uh, like a wrap or a stack or something like that. Probably that would be two by six inches or two by four, I don't know. Uh, and then we have this, uh, we connect these two elements to the, to the concrete beam. And why are they doing that? Well, Probably there is, uh, we have this element. Uh, so this element is holding or is attaching this beam to the concrete masonry unit. And uh, we need that, uh, it's not clear. Okay, so they should explain how they connect uh, this element to the beam and how they connect this to the, uh, to the thermal, to the concrete masonry unit. It's not clear. But what they do have, it's this two by four. This is, yeah, this is almost two. And the length or the height is three something. Yeah, so this is a two by four uh, wooden element. And uh, it's here at the top of this concrete beam. Okay, so we are going to um, go to annotate, uh, create a field region. I'm going to create a two by four, four inches down, two inches here. Okay, so that's the two by four. Uh, I'm going to move it from this point to that point. And I have uh, two of them, as you can see. Uh, okay. It's not two by four, actually, because uh, they use this to stop uh, this thermal insulating material. And uh, what was the thickness of this thermal insulating material that we used here? Three inches. Okay, so we are going to make this um, two. Uh, or four by a uh, one point five. Over here, okay, we need to copy there. And now the the texture, if it's uh, wood blocking, uh, so it's made of wood, so we can select both this one and this one, override graphics in view. And the material, uh, we can select something that it sounds, that it sounds or looks like wood, like this, apply. Okay. Um, so now I have two here and two on the other side. So let's copy. Now I have to change the material again. Okay, so now I have these two blocks of wood. Uh, this uh, thermal insulating material uh, goes up uh, 
Yep. And now uh, the second layer of thermal insulation goes up. this point I don't know why I can filter detail okay so now I can move it all the way down Okay, so that's it. I have these two wooden uh, blocks here. I have the thermal insulating material, the first layer, and then the second layer goes beyond that one. Uh, what is this? Uh, so according to this, I think this is another thin layer of thermal insulation. So we have the the membrane, but here we have like one inch of uh, thermal insulation. So we need like another, and that goes up to that point. Okay, so let's go to region, field region, and go all the way up to this point, uh, one inch up. And here, okay, and that will be a thermal insulation. So I have to remove this hatch and I have to create another hatch here. Okay, so override graphics in view. And uh, I don't want to see this uh, foreground pattern and I want uh, insulation, uh, it's one inch. like that. Okay, so it's important that uh, we wrap everything with uh, thermal insulating material. Oh, uh, well, here we have ply because this is plywood, exterior grade plywood. Okay, so this element here, it's plywood. So here we have uh, another a uh, half inch of plywood. Okay, so let's do it. So before this, we can move it, um, I think one quarter of an inch would be enough. And I'm going to create here, let's say one inch. This is too small. Half inch, sorry. Half inch. So here I'm going to place another rectangle with half inch of plywood, this one. Okay. So again, another uh, field region. And here. And the texture. Override graphics in view. Uh, material. We do have plywood here. Okay, so let's use this ply. Okay. Yep, so I think that's the, the plywood uh, texture uh, that we have here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I think it was half or one quarter, I don't remember. Half. Okay, uh, now I have to move this rectangle. Uh, filter, select the detail item. And I have to move this rectangle up. And I have to move the uh, the thermal insulation detail. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we are almost there. And now we need the internal thermal insulation of this parquet. Okay, so we are done with the external layers, I think. Uh, I think. And now uh, we need these two vertical uh, thermal insulating. So there's a vertical thermal insulating that has the thickness of these two wooden uh, blocks. And then we have another, uh, the same thing. Okay, so we need to do this one, that one. Um, so region, I start here and then there. Here we have the tilt, that's a little weird. Okay, so make sure that this line is uh, tilted, the same tilt that we had for the roof itself. Now we trim and we do this and that. And uh, we do have this field region. I want to get rid of this hatch of the right graphics in view. Uh, I don't want to see the foreground. Okay, so we have a white and now we have to add the thermal insulation, and I think that was three inches. Okay, and now I want uh, this. Okay, so there is another uh, I think it was one half. Yeah, this is one one half. Uh, the second uh, layer of thermal insulation here. So it has to be one one half and it has to go all the way up. Okay, up to the half inch of thermal insulation that we have here. Okay. So this is uh, another region, line, we start at this point, we go one, one half, then we go down, up to this point here, now uh, there, and now up, Overwrite graphics in view. Uh, I want to see. And now the insulation. This is one, one half, 1 1.5. And we go from this point to that point. Okay. And now probably I have to move this here in. So I think, okay, we have the gypsum wall or the gypsum's false ceiling. We have the deck with concrete. We have two layers, four inch uh, thermal insulation. Uh, then we go up, uh, we have three inches of thermal insulation, one, one half, three inches, one, one half. Then we go, uh, we have this uh, plywood and we wrap this with one inch of thermal insulation. That's the plywood and then one inch of thermal insulation. And uh, we have another plywood element here. That looks slightly thicker than this. Uh, if that was uh, a half, this can be three quarters. Okay, uh, and that plywood. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. Look at this. At the top of the of the steel beam, uh, we have another uh, wood block, wood nailer secured to steel standing. Okay. Um, 
So we have another two by, no, uh, yeah, one and a half by four, probably. So that's the, the thickness of that. Uh, so it's here because we have to lean the plywood on that block here. Okay, so we can uh, create another region. We can have like uh, four inches. That's the standard. Okay, let's type four inches. And then we go up to this point. And now I bring this and this. And I click, I change the texture by element that was wood. Okay. And finally, uh, we need this plywood. Okay, so this plywood goes all the way. Uh, oh, but before the plywood, okay, so we have this uh, gypsum and uh, this can be half inch. We don't, oh uh, yes, we have half inch of uh, gypsum sheeting and it goes, it's vertical and horizontal. So I need this half inch of gypsum, another region, field region. So I'm going to do this half inch. I go down. Here. Override. Graphics in view material. It's gypsum. Yep. And now I need another gypsum uh, here. So I'm going to do that again, region, field region, uh, like this, half inch up. It's one and override graphics in view. Gypsum, uh, what is it? Okay. And now I can complete this plywood here. Okay, so yeah, so that was half inch. And this is slightly thicker, so let's make it three quarters. So another a region, three quarters. Uh, the material is plywood. And finally, finally, uh, we need this uh, coping. Okay, so what is the coping? Uh, plywood is not a material that can be exposed to the to the water, so we need to uh, create this coping to protect this against water. Okay, so the water goes out and out. So that material can be its coping system, metal coping system. Uh, if we look at uh, coping, and we look at images, yeah, so that's the, so it's something metallic. It can be aluminum or lead or zinc or galvanized steel. 
something like that. Okay, so we have different layers and we need this coping to protect everything against water. So it's a continuous material. Well, continuous, there's, there are always joints and uh, we have to those joints. But in this detail, we just need to add this coping. So let's do it. Okay. Uh, the important thing is the shape. You see how it does this to move the water out of the out of the, the wall. Okay, so we always have this uh, to move the water out or here. See. Um so another region. And uh, I can start here. I move it there. Like that. And now I'm going to offset something very thin. This is too thick. Uh, probably one eighth would be enough. So I offset everything. Hmm? And now I have to close this shape here. And okay, we click, okay. And now we have the copy. Oof. Um, well, that looks a little ugly, uh, so we should keep moving this down or move this. Yeah, so make sure that everything stops at the same point and it will look well. This. Um, okay, I have to select the detail items. but only one of them. So down, now this one. Yeah. And what about this? Um, what's left is uh, the uh, the membranes. Okay, so we have to uh, continue this membrane. It goes all the way like this. Okay, so let's. Uh, continue this membrane all the way up to this point. 
Now we have to go to annotate uh, detail lines. Uh, that was the waterproofing. So now we have to uh, work, go that way. Then uh, it goes above the, the plywood level. Okay, over the plywood. And then we move this down. And yep. Yeah. And, and now it goes over the deck. Okay, so that's the first uh, waterproofing layer. And here we have another one. And I told you that it seems different. And that makes sense because uh, the material, the waterproofing material for the wall and the roof should be slightly different. That makes sense. So I can create another um, uh, another layer, another line type. So uh, to create a new line type, we have to go to manage. We have to go to this one, additional settings and line styles. And in line styles, I have here all the lines that was the waterproofing. So the line weight was six and the dash was one eighth. Okay, so I'm going to create a new one. Let's name it a waterproof for the roof. And um, the weight, uh, no, let's make it six and let's select a different dash. Uh, so it was one eighth. Let's see this three sixteenths. Uh, what it looks like. Uh, I apply no. This is dash dot. No, no. I want dash three one eighth one sixteenth. Apply. And I want to go to annotate. Uh, detail lines. Now here we should have the waterproofing roof. And yeah, I think there's a difference between this one and that one. So I'm moving this here because that goes, okay, over the plywood all the way up here. So we have to move it up. Now, I think I, yep, I did something wrong because this plywood should go like this. So this plywood is going up to that point, yeah. Okay, and now I have to move it down. And uh, now line again. Here. Uh, well, uh, you see that here, uh, this is very sensitive because that's a corner and the slope is going down. So a lot of water can stay here, even if we, we have this drain uh, near the, the corner, but some water can stay here. So probably that's why they have used this double uh, membrane here. So when we are uh, in a sensitive place and a corner can be that kind of place it doesn't do any harm uh, having like a double uh, roof uh, waterproof membrane because we are reinforcing the waterproof of the, the corner here
kind of exhausting um, working with uh, that level of, of detail, okay? But, and we, we haven't done this because I don't understand how they fix uh, all these elements, uh, especially this one. I do not understand what they do here. Probably there's a uh, there's a bolt uh, to connect the wood to the concrete beam. So I can try to find a a family for that. So if we go to insert uh, family uh, detail items. So what the hell is that? Okay, so where did I find it? Detail items, metals. This common work results for metals. And here we have bolts. Uh, so we have to find something similar to that detail. I think this is the, the one, the expansion bolt side, whatever. Open. And now in annotate, uh, detail component, uh, we have this ball here. It's kind of short. Okay, apparently we can make it longer. And then I can mirror. 